I'm Jason Carter. Physical optimization defines my life. The day I was born, doctors nearly killed me with medical malpractice. They said I'd never walk. I've been proving them wrong for 35 years. It's easier than you think to obtain super optimal health. I've devoted my life to it, and with my help, you can too. I'm Jason Carter, and this is Enzyme Mental. And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter, and today I wanted to tell you about the first B vitamin discovered, and that, of course, is thiamine, appropriately also known as vitamin B1. So severe thiamine deficiency causes a syndrome known as beriberi. Symptoms of beriberi include mental confusion, muscle wasting, which is also known as dry beriberi, fluid retention, which is wet beriberi, high blood pressure, difficulty walking, and also heart disturbances. Beriberi was relatively common in Asia among sailors and in prisons also, and prior to the late 1890s, no one knew what really caused beriberi. Then, in 1873, a Dutch naval doctor observed that European crew members had significantly fewer cases of beriberi than sailors recruited from the East Indies. By decreasing the amount of white rice the sailors ate, the rates of beriberi decreased also, but the doctor believed that the beriberi was caused by some toxin or infectious agent in the white rice. A Japanese naval doctor was the first to report that beriberi seemed to be a nutritional deficiency. He based his opinion on the fact that by giving Japanese sailors additional meat, dry milk, and vegetables, the incidence of beriberi actually dropped. However, it was a Dutch physician who began what are now classic experiments in the 1890s that clarified the role of the diet in beriberi. So this Dutch physician, Christian Eichmann, noticed that feeding foul polished white rice produced symptoms similar to beriberi. By adding rice polishings to the feed, these are the materials that are removed from whole rice to produce white rice, Eichmann was able to cure the foul of beriberi. It was later demonstrated that the addition of green peas, green beans, and meat prevented beriberi and fowl, and so from that he deduced correctly that there was something in natural food that prevented beriberi. So in 1911, Casimir Funk, working at the Lister Institute of London, isolated from rice polishings what he considered the substance that would cure and or prevent beriberi. Funk termed his discovery a vitamin, and what Funk actually isolated, however, turned out to be the anti vitamin, otherwise known as niacin, and we definitely talked about that. That's vitamin B3. In Java in 1926, two Dutch scientists isolated the true anti-beriberi vitamin, pure thiamine. Today, white rice is often enriched with additional thiamine and other nutrients lost during the milling process. However, beriberi is still prevalent in many parts of Asia, where white rice supplies up to 80% of the total calories consumed. Beriberi and many other nutrient deficiencies in third world countries could be prevented if the people simply ate whole grains. So, the story of beriberi and the discovery of thiamine highlights the value of whole grains over polished grains, and it's already well known that whole grains provide substantially more accessible food compounds and possibly many unknown compounds with help promoting properties also. So instead of removing the natural nutrients from the grains and then adding back a small portion of synthetic counterparts, it just makes more sense to eat the whole grain. So food sources of thiamine include brown rice, sunflower seeds, whole wheat, and also nuts. Thiamine is extremely sensitive to alcohol and also tannins like those found in coffee and black tea and sulfites. So any of these compounds destroy thiamine or render it useless. Thiamine is also sensitive to a factor in uncooked freshwater fish and shellfish too. So as we already know, severe thiamine deficiency results in beriberi. And although this is relatively uncommon, except in the case of extreme alcoholics, many Americans do not consume the recommended daily allowance of at least 1.5 milligrams, especially elderly patients in hospitals or nursing homes. Milder deficiency usually results in fatigue, depression, pins and needle sensations or numbness of the legs, and even constipation. In alcoholics, the combination of thiamine deficiency and alcohol can produce a serious brain disorder known as the Wernicke-Korsakoff syndrome. 
The primary use of thiamine is to, again, prevent thiamine deficiency, especially in cases of diabetes, Crohn's disease, multiple sclerosis, and other neurological diseases, and also to prevent and treat impaired mental function in the elderly and in Alzheimer's patients, and also in epileptics being treated with Dilantin, which, as I've told you before, is also known as phenytoin. Thiamine is essential for proper energy production in the brain, and thiamine deficiency is characterized, again, by impaired mental function and severe deficiency, even psychosis. In addition to its role as a nutrient, thiamine also demonstrates some pharmacological effects on the brain itself. Specifically, it mimics the important neurotransmitter involved in memory, which is acetylcholine. So patients with Alzheimer's disease exhibit a severe loss of acetylcholine action within certain key areas of the brain. Thiamine, however, mimics the effects of acetylcholine. This effect explains the positive clinical results of thiamine intake, which can be anywhere from 3 to 8 grams per day in ideal cases, in improving mental function in Alzheimer's disease and age-related impaired mental function, also known as senility. So as far as a dosage for general supplementation, a daily dosage of 50 to 100 milligrams appears safe and appropriate. In elderly individuals suffering from either Alzheimer's disease or any kind of age-related mental impairment, the recommended dose for therapeutic effects is around, again, 3 to 8 grams per day. Thiamine is water-soluble, which means you will urinate out what you don't use. And it is better to take your thiamine as part of a comprehensive B-complex because they do tend to work better when all the B vitamins are grouped together. And an interesting thing about thiamine is that it's also known as the anti-mosquito vitamin because there is a prevalent theory that those of us who have adequate levels of thiamine in our blood seem to admit an odor through our skin that mosquitoes during the summertime really don't like. So that right there is quite an incentive to take more thiamine every day. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.